In the age of cognitive machines, great opportunities are being created, but also some risks are in front of us. It's very important that we recognize what are the risks, and at the same time, our students are aware and are able to identify them, because they will have to face all these challenges along their lives. So, what are some of these risks? Mainly, we must consider the question of ethics. Ethics is one of the more crucial topics when we want to discuss the fairness of these systems. But we also have bias, privacy, governance, and one of the more important, the data that is used to feed these AI systems of today. The development of AI today is focused on the need of tons of data. Machine learning, deep neural networks are angry for data, but the data used is from our past actions, and that reflects our bias and errors. So we have to be very careful with the data used by these systems. And about the impacts on work and on society. Many experts point to a mass of unemployment, main due to the fact of smart automation systems that will not only take the physical work, the blue-collar workers, but also the work of professions that we could say that were protected from these impacts, such as lawyers, healthcare professionals, finance office and so on, what are called the white collar works. In my opinion, the net between loss and gain will be positive. The big problem will be if the educational systems do not adapt to face this challenge. We will have a shortage of skills for the new jobs that will be created. That will be the major problem. Another question in terms of society is the use of these systems to overwatch persons and control everything they do. For example, in China, social credit systems were developed where everything you do is controlled and you can be punished or rewarded according to your behavior. Will this be the beginning of 1984 of Orwell? Another problem is the way that we are manipulated by social media. This is clear another big problem that everybody needs to be aware of. And fake news and the deep fake now possible by AI are another big concern. These are some examples of what AI systems can do now a day. Imagine, for example, that in just 3.7 seconds of your audio, it's possible to create another audio with you saying anything they want. Imagine the danger of such system and imagine what will be possible to do with AI in just a few years. Another big concern is about deepfake. Creating a video of you using other videos, where you say things that you never agreed in your life. These systems are becoming so perfect that experts estimate that we only need six pounds to have something almost impossible to be traced, if it's true or false. Now imagine in a few years considering the velocity of change that we are seeing. This is just a small example of a deep fake video for you to have a clear idea how they work. So here clearly can see that you have someone say something that they never said. So this is a huge problem if you mix it together with fake news. Now imagine all the kind of fakes, these videos, what we call deep fakes, that can be created. Having virtual reporters, what is the impact on the life of journalists and the way we are consuming information? This is just some of the examples. You see here the Austin Post have published 850 articles in the past year by these systems. Take a look at these two photos, these two persons, what is real and what is not real. Take just a few seconds to guess. None of them are real. They are both fake and they were created by AI. You can see the link there and you even can give it a try is this person does not exist.com and is a special kind of neural networks that are creating this fake image another example that you can see here on the bottom is a company using ai they can create automatically models this is person that does not exist 
So imagine all the questions, even philosophical questions, that these systems will raise in the next few years. One of the most scandalous problems concerning politics and social media and user and data was the Cambridge Analytica issue, where millions of profiles were used to influence the votes on the United States 2016 and also on Brexit, without the consent of the users. Another question, weapons that are controlled by AI systems, one of the big questions of today, who is responsible, who control these weapons? How can we be aware that we will keep on control of them? Autonomous cars is another big issue. Who is responsible in a car crash? The owner, the AI system, the company that built the car, and about the insurance and the moral decision of the machines facing a dangerous situation. This site from MIT, Moral Machine, is a very good resource to discuss all the things around this topic concerning machines taking decisions instead of us. And about robots, the so-called cobots, collaborative robots, how will we interact with them? What will be their rights, for example? Will we have to learn how to collaborate with them? And about our students, how will be they prepared for it? This is some of the examples of this kind of robots that are being created today and are being integrated in our life, in our workplace, and so on. This is an example of a robot called Atlas, and I will just show you what these robots can do nowadays. Pretty amazing. But besides all the challenge we have, people and institutions working on ethical frameworks to help as possible to regulate all these new technologies that are entering very fast in our life. These are just some examples, for example, from the European Commission, for the OECD and another institution that are working to try to regulate and to define the ethics framework for all these systems that are being created. But nevertheless, it's up to us to decide, we humans. For now, we are creating these cognitive agents and machines, so is our responsibility. So far, technology is neutral. We still control the switch. We still control what is being created. So it's up to us to take the necessary measures to have system designed for the good of all. We have the choice. We, not the machine. At least for a few more moments. And we can decide if we want a new renaissance movement or we want to enter a digital dark age. It's up to us. And very important for us as teachers is to educate our students about this. Thanks.